So, I have finally caught my hands on the DJI Avatar, and it's fair to say, I haven't had this much fun with the drone ever. Okay, so let's get straight into it and keep in mind that this video isn't sponsored in any way, hence why I got the drone four months late and all my opinions are honest and my own. Anyway, this is the DJI Avatar kit we went for. It's called the Pro View Combo. It comes with the actual drone, of course, as well as your DJI Goggles 2, not at all confusing with the last version, the DJI Goggles V2, the battery and cable for powering the goggles, it also comes with a motion controller, something I've never personally used before that will be interesting. Then a single charger. We also got a fly more kit and this snazzy little hard case to keep it all tidy and together. Finally, speaking of it, I grabbed our DJI FPV controller too from the DJI FPV kit, which I know most people won't have lying around. So all in all, this cost us £1,708 which I have to say does seem quite a lot, especially for a drone you could find yourself crashing a lot. So for peace of mind, we also got the DJI Care and Refresh package for £55 for the year. And it's fair to say, it's gonna be worth it. Okay, so let's get onto all this kit and discuss just how good it is while also showing you footage while I talk. If you already bought the DJI FPV and just want the drone without the new goggles or anything else, anything else, it will cost you £499, which is also good to know if something were to go wrong. The drone itself is an extremely slick design and I'm glad DJI went for a cine whip design this time. For those who don't know, this is what a cine whip is. It's a type of FPV drone that protects the props all around and allows for more stable, smooth, and as in the name, cinematic flying and footage, as well as also improving the longevity of your drone with the protection. And despite this, it can still perform all your flips and tricks a lot better than this drone can actually. So that's pretty incredible to be honest. It's very good in manual mode. It also allows for a turtle mode, meaning if the drone were to land on its back, you can simply go into the menus, select the turtle mode button, and it will fix itself back to normal like a car on GTA 5 or something. A crazy bit of tech that will hopefully save you time walking to where you've crashed. It weighs 410 grams and has a max hover time of 18 minutes. So a max flight time of around 15 minutes. The Avatar has a max speed of 60 miles per hour and you'll need to be in manual mode going full pelt in order to achieve that. The only sensors the drone has is downward and that's simply for return to home and landing. The minute you start flying, these won't help you break or bypass detected obstacles. The battery is just sliding at the back, plug in at the bottom, and a press and hold to start the drone. One major problem with the drone and the battery system is that the batteries can fly out of the back and power off the drone, even in minor collisions when you hit something. So just always keep your drone close and make sure your spotter can see it. We are looking at solutions and this is a universal problem from what we've seen. The batteries also take quite a while to charge. Your SD card slot and Type-C plug-in are located below the props at the bottom left set here. The reason for this jarring location is that that is where the brand new DJI O3 air unit is. And it's in this air unit that is attached to this brand new camera that the real magic is in. So the brand new O3 air unit could possibly has already started to revolutionize SPV. And this is the reason this drone is so good. It can shoot 4K at 60 FPS, 2.7K at 120 for super slow-mo. It also offers decently light -like color profile for color grading, which is a great feature for me personally. The main USP is it has built-in rock steady technology for straight out of the camera picture perfect smooth footage. You'll see the contrast in how smooth the footage is between the goggles and the actual drone. Personally, I was astonished at how well the rock steady Rock Steady technology can achieve this straight out of the camera. Is it better than Real Steady and your best GoPro? The short answer is no, but it's streamlined quick and ultimately user friendly. It saves you time buying separate drone, GoPro, goggles, controller, Real Steady, and also learning how to repair what you will inevitably crash. It provides one package and you will soon see FPV drones with the new air unit 
and no GoPro in order to keep it light and fast as possible for intricate flying. It has three different field of views, normal, wide and ultra wide. You can change your settings to how you want from both auto to manual settings and there is an option to buy ND filters. The camera is a massive improvement from the DJI FPV both in quality and the smoothness of the footage. Now let's discuss these new goggles. Now there are some major differences between the V2 goggles, sorry, the V2 goggles, already getting confused, and the goggles too. The first obvious one is size and the weight. The new goggles are a lot smaller and lighter and for me that makes a massive difference. Some may prefer the bigger ones and I get that but I find them a little over cumbersome. The next is your transmission. With the goggles too, your two antennas are permanently attached and just flip up. However, the V2 goggles, you need to screw on all four antennas which can prove a bit of a faff unless you get the right case and especially if it's cold. I would say the transmission is possibly the biggest weakness of the Avatar. This may be specific to the UK and other parts of Europe that have a 2km max, but it barely feels like a 1km at times. The new goggles too also work with a touchpad system on the side instead of buttons, and I must say I prefer this, but I do miss this record button for just your goggle footage. To do this, you will need to, to do this. <laughs> to do this, you will need to go into the settings and select both or just goggles to record what you're physically seeing. Now the final biggest changes are the actual eyepieces. The new goggles too comes with a lens cover and you'll see that the focus can be adjusted in your prescription if you need glasses. The position of them also can be locked in with a push and screw. Video feedback wise, your previous model offered 810p quality, whereas the new goggles offered 1080p HD feedback, which is just crazy if you think about it. Back to analog days where FPV started, crazy. One slight problem, there's specific to the shape of your face and the nose gap isn't quite high enough. I sometimes need to push the goggles down a bit to be in line with my eyes, which creates some light leak and squeezes my nose a little bit, which isn't that comfortable. So, controller wise, you have two options. The first is this, your motion controller, which is designed to move as the drone moves. As you move the controller, the drone moves. It's, you'll get it once you use it. It's great for starting off and for letting beginners and friends have a go, but if you are looking to learn manual mode and really push your FPV flying, then you'll need to get the DJI FPV controller too, which comes in at £139 to buy separately. I think it's well known that everyone is a big fan of this controller, lightweight and does the job without unnecessary switches. Now, I'll be doing a full video on the best way to fly the avatar in manual mode, so I will go into more controller specifics then, and maybe more settings then, so make sure to subscribe subscribe so you don't miss a thing okay conclusion time and a quick roundup of the best and worst aspects of the dji avatar as always in my humble opinion i believe this version of fpv drone is definitely a step in the right direction for dji it's quick to set up all very user friendly and a great way to slowly improve your flying and eventually rip it up in manual mode the camera is honestly out of this world, the quality and the built-in stabilisation will save you time in all stages of the video making process. The goggles too are nearly perfect but unfortunately they aren't comfy for me and I've seen a few people saying this as well. As well as that, the transmission just is awful honestly, it goes so quickly and this drone could be perfect for internal inspections type work but there needs to be a way to improve the transmission which I will be looking into in another video. The other downside, as I mentioned, is the battery popping out, but I'll also be testing some alternatives to stopping this. So all in all, this drone is a one-of-a-kind FPV. You'll never get bored of taking it to crazy cool locations, and for me, I'd always have it in the boot of my car just in case. Let us know what you think of the DJI Avatar down in the description, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more exciting content coming your way. And then, um, I'll catch you on the next one.